On this episode of Extraordinary Women TV. If you've ever had that nagging inner voice telling you to break out on your own as an independent artist, well, I've got a treat for you today. In the studio is singer-songwriter and producer Robin DeLunto. Always on the go, when she's not recording or touring, she is teaching the art of songwriting to other aspiring musicians. Well, you've got two albums out? Yeah, two albums. So your latest uh, Little Lines? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your album. Yeah, um, the latest was, is a collection of songs from some of them were written five years ago and some of them were written two weeks before we went to mixing. And um, it was kind of about, uh, the record's about sort of growing up in the city and kind of coming to terms with, you know, the cold, hard realities of, you know, being an adult in a big city and also, uh, and also keeping your heart in check. So uh, that's kind of what the album covers. Something about you that I find really interesting um, is that you don't like to write sad songs. Yeah, and many <laughs> artists do. So what is it about sad songwriting that, um, that uh, you wish not to do? Um, I guess I will say that, uh, you know, my inclination naturally is, is maybe on, the, on a, the bit of the sad side, you know? And when I see people who are bouncing bubbly at 6 a.m., I wonder, like, how, what did... Like, what pill is that that you're taking to feel that way, you know what I mean? I, I feel like people turn to music to bring them up or to uh, channel an emotion they're feeling. Um, and I want, I want music that inspires me and brings hope um, rather than, you know, solidifies any sort of, you know, down feelings I'm having. So I always kind of try to pick the, the brighter side. Do you think artists at times are maybe too self-indulgent in their emotions and... Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. I love, I know what I love to listen to and I steer clear of some things that might be a bit self-indulgent because uh, it's not for you, you know, when, this, when you're done the song it stops being for you and it's about other people and I think people that are successful as songwriters are aware of that, the song is, the song is for everyone else once it's out of you. Um, so it's about how to get it to them and, and, maybe it, and maybe allow it to help them in some way. Some people have described your music similar to that of Sarah McLaughlin. Um, I mean, how would you describe your music? Um, I'm just, I'm such a huge fan of female songwriters and singer-songwriters. I grew up in, in the 90s and just was obsessed. It was the best time to be discovering music. Um, I do, I tend to be on the pop side and uh, sometimes I don't want to be. I kind of stray there. I feel like I like sort of bright, energetic, um, type of music, but there's always sort of an undertone of, uh, of you know, the heart, the tough stuff, and uh, I like combining that sort of folk and pop together to, to make a sort of blend that feels like my own. And your your music has appeared in uh, Being Erica and Degrassi, The Next Generation. Uh, congratulations to you! It's another congratulations. <laughs> uh, but how did how does that feel for? for someone who's struck out on their own, for your music to be appearing in, in some yeah. s quite quality, substantial productions. Well, I, for my first record, I had a label helping me and it was, it was really amazing. And um, they were really supportive about licensing. And, and slowly after that, I, um, I started to meet people who were you know, putting songs in movies and TV shows. And these people are music fans. They're the biggest music fans on earth. And they just want the right song. And, uh, and after having a few things in, in uh, films and series, I realized how unbelievably value, uh, valuable it is for an indie artist because you're connecting with people um, overseas, you're connecting with people in tiny little countries you never thought to tour or target, um, and you're, getting, you're gaining fans that way and people who really enjoy um, your music uh, who wouldn't have discovered you otherwise. And you began writing jingles, is that right? Yeah, there are a few songs that have come from failed uh, Samsung ads and stuff like that. So I was thinking, oh yeah, that song used to be a McDonald's pitch and now it's a full length, you know, song about heartbreak or something. So that's kind of fun. Um, I mean, what gave you the idea to strike out on your own and just, just go for it? Um, I, I don't know, I'm a sort of a control freak. So I wanted to, I didn't want to, to ask if anything was okay. I didn't want to ask anyone else 
are, are we ready to record now? Are these songs okay? Um, I just wanted to develop a community of people who were so talented and so supportive, and I ended up doing that with this record. Um, there's some amazing writers and producers and players, and everyone is just positive, and people people tell you, you know, straight up if they don't like something or what, how you can improve, and um, there's ways to grow and develop um, without without maybe being part of a uh, label. Um, there's other ways to do that and get that support. And now, the Good to Know Minute. Okay, so Robin, it's time for my Good to Know Minute, uh, and I know we've got a great success tip. Yeah, definitely. Um, my tip is that you can teach yourself anything, and th by that I mean anything at all. You can teach yourself a skill, um, a skill that you've been wanting, or especially as an independent artist, there's so many skills that might not come with a creative sort of brain. Um, and the way that I've taught myself how to uh, do things that were very hard or unnatural for me, or to use people in my community, ask questions, read articles, watch YouTube videos, um, anything you possibly can, but just know you can absolutely learn any skill. Um, if you put your mind to it. <laughs> and that's good to know. You can learn any skill if you put your mind to it. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, more on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay with us. And now for more Extraordinary Women. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with Robin Dalunto. Do you remember that moment you said, one day I want to be a singer, songwriter? It just, it keeps, I keep thinking, you know what, next year I'm going to take up carpentry or something, and it just keeps going on, but um, it wasn't, I've been writing since I was nine or something and making up songs, and it just feels like a really natural part of my life, and, you know, there wasn't sort of a setting out. I, I took it, I did a university degree in psychology, and I, I really kind of wanted to, do my masters and I kept veering away and I kept playing shows and recording and um, I thought wow if it's this hard to resist I might as well try to go with that path and go with the flow there because my everything in my being is pushing me there all the time so if, if there was uh, uh, any world artist uh, world famous artist that you could have breakfast with tomorrow who would it? Who would you choose? I have to say Joni because I know that she would be a bit crusty and maybe she, you know, she would just tell the truth for sure. And I just love Joni Mitchell and um, I love that she's not cheery and she's not she's not a um, manufactured version of herself because it's hard to be. I think it's hard to be a woman and be have you know maybe negative opinions about things and all of those things when you're in the public eye. There's sort of like you know, even at an indie level, there's this pressure to be sort of, you know, everything's cheery and, and positive because that's how your audience will like you. And she's always been very real, and I found that very uh, inspiring. And your music is available on iTunes? Yeah. Yeah, iTunes Canada, and, and we're working on elsewhere. More info about that very soon. So if, if there is a young woman out there and she wants to, you know, break out on her own, she's she's talented and she wants to create her own album, um, what piece of advice would you have for her today? Um, I think it's, it's to have conversations with people like this and, um, you know, I was a bit shy about, there were so many women I wanted to ask questions um, to when I was starting out and I, I was just sort of shy about it and um, whenever, uh, you know, I'll get emails from young babies who are looking to start their careers and I, I think that's really great. They they went out and emailed, you know, a stranger asking for advice or um, a co-write or support with tour contacts and it's, you know, it's all about making relationships and being a person other people want to be around. Um, that's the number one for sure because <laughs> uh, nobody wants to work with someone who's kind of just grabbing for their way in. So your vision for yourself going forward? Um, I, d I definitely want to expand uh, to, I'd like to produce someone else's record. I'd like to, um, I'm scoring a few um, very short films right now and I'm, I'd love to score, you know, score a, a short um, or a, a feature length at some point. I love, I'm really getting into scoring and I'm loving that and 
um, with my uh, my students I'm teaching songwriting I, I would love to kind of support them in their careers as well and see where they go and so let's talk a little bit about that so you teach songwriting is that just in Toronto or yeah, you took it on the road? It's wherever I can get to at this point. I'm looking right. to assemble a small team to kind of go elsewhere, but um, we're doing Oakville, um, all North Toronto, and Vaughan, and Etobicoke, Mississauga. Um, and it's just great. It just ended up being girls. It ended up being girls age 7 to 18 sort of thing. And um, the, the things they come up with, I try to just give them as much support as possible and talk about talk about form and talk about hooks and um, and mel how to use melody to your advantage and how to use your instrument and you know after a couple of weeks they say hey how do you work that recording program and I say here I'll show you how to work the recording program so um, they've had a lot of you know for every one of them's had success in what they're doing and the kids at school say oh we can't wait for your next song and people are starting to know that the, this is part of their identity and that's really um, that's gonna I hope that's gonna help them as they as they go through adolescence the dreaded adolescence. And do you think that uh, helping others uh, has made you a better recording artist or singer-songwriter? Actually, that's, I started to notice that it was helping me in my writing mm -hmm. a lot um, because I was nitpicking, you know, in a friendly way with, with my students and suddenly I'd come home and start writing and I'd be nitpicking myself as well and self-editing in ways mm -hmm. I hadn't been before. And I mean that nitpicking in a positive way because um, when you're starting out as a songwriter, you're kind of just thrilled that a song has come out of you. You know, half the time you don't revisit and say, "How how much better can this be? How can I improve this?" So it's definitely definitely helped me in my own work. Now you you uh, have a connection to Meredith Shaw, who was also on the show not that long ago, actually. Yes, yes. Um, she's a good friend, and I mm -hmm. admire her to death. I think she's uh, she's just brilliant, and she's very organized and motivated, and all of the things I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> and you were involved with her, her festival for girls. Yeah, yeah. So she, uh, she has her festival, Girls Who Believe, at um, the Great Hall in Toronto. And uh, it's grown. And she's this year, she, she had a bunch of new vendors that uh, were just amazing. It's all female entrepreneurs. And she obviously, there's music at her festival. And she, uh, she had one of my students perform in her festival this year. And it was just, it was like, you know, Katy Perry had asked my student to come on tour with her is, is what, how it felt. It was just amazing. It was really great. Was that a proud moment for you? Oh yeah, I was such a proud mama. I just loved it. Well, thank you for being with us today, Robin, and sharing your story and uh, inspiring others to, to follow their dreams and hearts. Oh, thank you so much for having me. If you would like to be a guest on Extraordinary Women TV, visit our website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner or on Facebook at Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. Join us next time for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV.